Turning to finance, and key figures are due this week on the state of Australia's economy following the Reserve Bank's latest interest rate hike. And joining me now is Chief Investment Officer Scott Phillips from Motley Fool. Scott, good evening to you. Before we look ahead, what is the current state of the market after last week's 25 basis point increase? Georgie, good evening. That's a perfectly great question to start with. We know, of course, the economy is on a bit of a knife edge, or at least it feels like it. Retail sales down, company profits also down, but GDP is still strong and unemployment in a very, very good position, at least looking backwards. The market didn't love the rate increase last week, but I think that was also largely a story of US weakness. There's not a lot of confidence in the US. Concerns that the recession there might be deeper and longer. They've given up the if. They figure they're in a recession already, but wondering how long it will last. And that is weighing on stock markets right around the world, including here at home. OK, let's look to the week ahead. And on Tuesday, mm. we're due to see the monthly consumer confidence figures. What do we need to know? This is really important, Georgie, because we know the interest rates are having an impact right across the economy. Again, we've seen it in retail sales, but we also know the Black Friday sales were really good. So this will really tell us how people are thinking. Remember, of course, most economic figures look backwards and say, where were we a month or a month and a half ago? These are confidence numbers. In other words, how good are we feeling about spending right now? And that will tell us, I think, the tale of the tape when it comes to Christmas. There is a pretty good expectation of a decent Christmas. January is the real watch out for the economy. Whether we have a last hurrah in the next couple of weeks and then tighten our belts come the new year, that's certainly the expectation for most economists. Yeah, it's going to be very interesting to watch that. And on Thursday, we'll see the release of the latest employment figures. What's the forecast mm. on that front? These are the really important ones too, because if everything, if everyone stays employed, we can deal with everything else. If we start to lose jobs across the economy, the real concern is some sort of domino theory that if we start to lose jobs, that impacts on house prices, of course, with people potentially forced to sell, and that gets pretty ugly pretty quickly. The expectations are for not much change in the unemployment numbers, which should be wonderful if it happens. Uh, there is some concern we might see a slight uptick and whether or not we've seen, looking backwards at least, the recent lows for unemployment. Maybe they won't be so low again for a little while. That is the big watch out. A big surprise on the upside. May well have the RBA reconsidering its options when they meet next in February. Okay, and just finally, how are the futures for the ASX looking this evening? Wish I could finish on a positive note, Georgie, but unfortunately I can't. The US market held its nerve for most of their Friday night, our Friday night trading session, their Friday, but lost ground at the very last hour, hour and a half of trade, finishing down about three quarters of a percent. As a result, the ASX is likely to open down about half a percent tomorrow morning. Scott Phillips, always good to get your insights. Thank you very much. It's a pleasure. Thanks, Georgie. When we come back, Kelly Haywood has your weather forecast for the week ahead.